Hi, it's Dwyer. It's June 6, 2020. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I understand there is talk about Katie Taylor, who has quite the following, fighting Amanda Serrano. Let me back up a little bit, talk a little boxing history, and then hit this fight head on. You know, years ago, in the early 60s, Benny the Kid Parrot faced Gene Fulmer, right? Fulmer, great fighter, had beaten Sugar Ray Robinson in the past, right? Well, Fulmer beat the daylights out of Benny the Kid Parrot, such that in Parrot's next fight against Emil Griffin, a fighter he had, fight, he had fought before, Parrot gets hammered, gets killed, never regains consciousness. Gene Fulmer himself, before he died, felt that the beating that he gave to Benny the Kid Parrot contributed to his death in his next fight. Well, years ago, you had a great boxing match. Unbeaten Amanda Serrano against unbeaten Frida Wahlberg. Now, this is the one loss on Amanda Serrano's record. In my favorites folder here on YouTube, I've put highlights from that fight. I'm not convinced that Amanda Serrano lost that fight. Right? Understand, had she been awarded the decision, and the fight, of course, was in Wahlberg's backyard, she would be an unbeaten fighter today if her career went exactly as it has gone. Right? That's the one blemish on her record. Well, let me just say, if you look at the film of that fight, you're going to notice that Amanda Serrano, against an excellent fighter, Frida Wahlberg was excellent, but Amanda Serrano had a certain skill set that allowed her to land hard shots up top on Frida Wahlberg. Amanda Serrano, in terms of skills, is a mid-range hooker. She's a southpaw. She's a combination puncher. She likes to come in. She likes to throw a lot of hooks. It's a two-handed attack. It reminds me of how Danny Garcia fights. She's an excellent athlete. She has great stamina. She has high volume. Right? She prefers to be on her front foot, but she can fight on her back foot. She has an awareness of where she is in the ring as well as where she is in the timing of the round. She seems to be aware of the fact that, let's say, 30 seconds are left in the round. She knows when to turn it on and turn it off. She's a hard puncher, very hard puncher, but she's accurate. Well, understand, Frida Wahlberg was awarded the decision in their fight. Her, her career ended the very next fight she had. She got knocked down twice in the eighth round of that fight, was rushed to the hospital, and was diagnosed as suffering from a subdural hematoma. That was the end of Frida Wahlberg's career. I believe that Amanda Serrano's beating of Frida Wahlberg, her excellent counters, the power in her shots, the high volume, the fact that it was a very highly contested fight that went the distance, I believe all of that contributed to Frida Wahlberg ending up with a subdural hematoma in her next fight. In sum, 
Amanda Serrano hits that hard. Now, Katie Taylor, and both of these women are older. Taylor's 33. Amanda Serrano is 31. Katie Taylor has the faster hands. She also is a combination puncher. She's a little bit more creative with her combinations. You'll notice that she leverages her hand speed, where she's able to double up in the middle of a combination with the same hand in a way that Amanda Serrano does not, right? But to me, it is unclear, simply unclear, whether Katie Taylor can fight on her back foot. I think Amanda Serrano is better in terms of dealing with not just her back foot, but also the pacing of a fight, varying the rounds, keeping the opponent guessing, right? Pacing herself on the fight. In my favorites folder, you're going to notice Amanda Serrano's fight against Heather Hardy, who came in very highly regarded. You'll notice that Serrano comes out and almost blows her out of the water in the first round. Then has the presence of mind to take her foot off the gas. Pace herself the rest of the fight. She still has gas left at the end of the fight. In my opinion, she wins the last round of that fight. You're talking about the kind of cagey vet who I think is going to have an advantage over Katie Taylor. I think Katie Taylor is episodic. I think her hand speed has given her the advantage for much of her career. But she doesn't have Serrano's punching power. She simply doesn't. Right? She also, in my opinion, has a fight style that she can't vary that much. I know this is heresy. I understand Katie Taylor is unbeaten. I understand she has a fan base. Promoters love her. Right? But understand, these are the kind of opponents who burst bubbles. Serrano is the kind of person who will know about Katie Taylor's hand speed. Will figure out a way to pursue Katie Taylor after the ambush. Right, Katie Taylor likes to come in, throw flurries, back out. What I've found is that the highlights will show a Katie Taylor with incredible hand speed. Right, throwing a lot of punches. They'll look dramatic. Katie Taylor only has six KOs. Her power is not that great. And the problem with just focusing on highlights is it misses what would happen if She's fighting a KG vet, and after she flashes hand speed and takes a step back to regroup, if that KG vet then takes the step forward and gets Katie Taylor on her back foot, if the vet has the skill level of Amanda Serrano, who only has one dubious loss in the opponent's backyard, I think Katie Taylor's going to be in trouble. If these two women were the same weight and Amanda Serrano fights in the mid-120s, right? Katie Taylor is heavier. She's fighting 130, 135. If these women were the same weight, I would just take Amanda Serrano outright to win the fight. I think Amanda Serrano skill-wise is better than Katie Taylor. But understand there is a weight dynamic that gamblers need to look at here. This is one of those fights where the devil will be in the details. If they agree to fight in the mid-120s, I'm on the Amanda Serrano side of the play all day. If they sign to fight at 135, then it gets dodgy. Understand, Serrano pound for pound, has the bigger punch. 
The question is whether that would be offset by the natural weight gap. Right? Taylor does have the faster hands and is the heavier puncher. But she doesn't have, in my opinion, the skill set of Amanda Serrano. Because Katie Taylor is unbeaten, because this fight would likely be in the United Kingdom, and it might not be, but if it is in the United Kingdom to maximize the box office, right? And in this COVID-19 world, who knows if that's going to be a big priority for promoters, given that we're in an era now of crowd-free fights. I'm guessing you're going to get great odds on Amanda Serrano. For me, the betting side of the play is clear. I think Amanda Serrano is the better fighter than Katie Taylor. I'm going to be on the Amanda Serrano side of the ledger, especially since I expect her to be the underdog. Understand, even though she has much more professional experience than Katie Taylor, Right? Katie Taylor is the box office queen in this fight. Let me say this too. Even though Amanda Serrano has much more professional fight experience than Katie Taylor, she's the younger fighter by two years. Right? I think this fight comes down to great Amanda Serrano versus very good. The only issue I have with the fight is the weight at which it's fought. I like Amanda Serrano over Katie Taylor. That's how I'm going to play it betting-wise. If the fight is at 135 or what have you, right, 133, then I think it gets a little dodgy. I like Amanda Serrano at 130 in this fight even though that's a little big for Amanda Serrano. But I believe her advantage is that great. Right? I think Serrano, with this level of punching power, a patient back foot game, patience in the ring, not going to get too excited, even if she starts fast like she did against Heather Harvey. Right? Someone who has fought tough opponents like Frida Wahlberg who was excellent until the subdural hematoma ended her career, right? I think Serrano just has too much professional experience, too much moxie, the better skill set, the ability to win the slow rounds, right? Katie Taylor is either all or nothing. Either she's exerting herself and overwhelming an opponent or she's in the weeds a bit, having problems. Amanda Serrano is the kind of person who can, by design, win rounds that don't have that much action. I like Amanda Serrano in this fight. I'll concede weight is a concern. But again, Serrano has never been KO'd in her career. Katie Taylor only has six KOs. Right? Even with the weight gap, I would argue that Katie Taylor is not enough of a puncher. She's more of a speed combination fighter, an ambush speed combination fighter, than she is a measured power puncher. Right? I don't think Katie Taylor has the power to fully take advantage of the weight gap. But pay attention to the time of the weigh-in, whether there's a rehydration clause, things like that do matter. Weight is an issue as these are fighters from different weight classes. In sum, I think the betting side of the play is on Amanda Serrano. Right? I would not be surprised if Serrano wins this fight by stoppage. That's not the way I'm going to play it. I'm just going to take Serrano straight up. But understand, 
You saw Mike Tyson, another front foot heavy fighter. On his back foot, get stopped by Evander Holyfield. Right? Don't fall in love with highlights. You look at Katie Taylor and you see her forcing people over on the ropes, flashing a lot of hand speed. You don't see her backing up. Front foot heavy fighters forced to go on their back foot are in a foreign land. It's like traveling somewhere and not being able to speak the language. She's fighting, in my opinion, one of the all-time greats in women's boxing. Again, Serrano's one loss, in my opinion, is dubious. I'm going with the KG vet, especially since she's younger. Especially since she's recently beaten people like Heather Hardy. Especially since she has more experience in big fights. I like Amanda Serrano in this one. Let me hear from you. I'm expecting a lot of blowback. That's fine. That comes with this part of the internet. Let me hear from you. I know Katie Taylor's unbeaten. She's 33, folks. Right? She's 33. Just remember that. And has not fought the level of competition that Amanda Serrano has fought. If you disagree with my take, tell us why Katie Taylor would win this fight. Go ahead and make the case in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.